Hi everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus here, another episode of Magic Jewels. So uh, first of all I'd like to apologise for the lack in content over the last couple of weeks. I've been feeling a little bit demotivated to any recording, uh, starting a new job soon so it's kind of been stressing me out a little bit, uh, had things to do with my thesis, my PhD thesis, stuff like that. So uh, yeah, just, just a quick apology for the lack of content. But to get back into the swing of things, what I've decided to do is do a deck tech and I'm going to be go playing with my super friends deck tech today. This is an update uh, using the Kaladesh cards, so we've got things such as a couple of the new Planeswalkers and the new Gear Hulk, which is pretty cool, so it's like a Gear Hulk Super Friends deck. Start off with, we've got the pretty standard Oath of Nyssa, so the one green mana which allows us to search the top three cards of our library for a creature, land or Planeswalker. We can also use it to cast uh, Planeswalker spells with any colour mana we've got, which is awesome. Next is the one copy of Oath of Chandra, which allows us to dish out three damage to target creature. Whenever a Planeswalker comes in to control that turn, we get to deal two damage to a, a target opponent, or each opponent, sorry. Next we've got Nissa, so a nice little uh, creature which can also turn into Nissa Sage Animist. She also, allow, she also allows us to ramp up a wee bit as well, which is always very, very handy. Next up is Oath of Gideon, which uh, gives uh, each of our Planeswalkers an additional loyalty token whenever they come into play. Plus when it comes into play itself, we get two uh, tokens, which are good for early game blocking uh, and defending our Planeswalkers. Next we have Oath of Liliana, which is like a uh, better Fleshbag Marauder, forces their opponent to sacrifice a creature, we don't have to sacrifice one ourselves. And whenever a Planeswalker is coming to play that turn, we also get a Zombie Creature token as well. Next up is Anguished Unmaking, which is our uh, target removal, so it's a 3 mana instant, which allows us to exile target non-land permanent and we lose 3 life. Next is the first of our sweepers, so we have the 3 mana Radiant Flames, which allows us to sweep the board for up to 3 damage. We have Liliana, so uh, the cheapest of our Planeswalkers, which is a double black uh, three mana Planeswalker where we can ping small creatures, uh, uh, recurse things from our graveyard and also get the token which allows us to just keep spamming loads of zombies onto the battlefield. Next up we have Nissa, so uh, a three mana double green Planeswalker which uh, allows us to generate tokens, put counters on all our creatures or gain X life, X cards and X um, number of lands, sorry, where X is the number of lands we control, so it's quite nice. Next up we have Kalatas, so with uh, a lot of the removal and stuff in this deck, what he allows us to do is a 3-4 lifelinker, and whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, get exiled, and we get to put zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield in their place, which is awesome. Uh, in, our, in our control, which is uh, why it's called the Traitor of Get. Next we have Languish, so the next of our sweepers, so the 4 mana, uh, 4 damage sweeper. Explosive Vegetation for a bit of mana fixing and ramping as well. Uh, Gideon, uh, 4 mana, 4 loyalty planeswalker, which can either become a 5 5 indestructible human, generate tokens for us, or give, an, give us an emblem which gives all of our creatures plus 1 plus 1. Next up is one of the new Kaladesh planeswalkers, which is Chandra Torture Defiance. She's a 4 mana, 4 loyalty. Uh, with this, we can plus 1 her to exile the top card of our library. We may, we may then cast that card. If we don't, Chandra Torture Defiance deals 2 damage to each opponent, which is pretty cool. We can use her to ramp up, uh, so use her as a pseudo ramp, so add 2 mana to our mana pool every turn. Uh, we can also minus 3 her to deal 4 damage to target creature, and her emblem is, uh, when we get to use our ultimate emblem, it's whenever you cast a spell, this emblem deals 5 damage to target creature or player, which is pretty cool. There's not that many spells in this deck, but uh, we may mostly want it for the top 3 abilities anyway. Next up we have Nahiri, so a 4-mana uh, 4, four loyalty planeswalker, which allows us to cycle through our deck. Uh, get rid of uh, enchantments, artifacts or creatures, and we can also so search up some of our big creatures as well with our ultimate ability. Arlencord is in next, so uh, we can either give a target creature plus two plus two and vigilance and haste. Uh, we can use her to summon wolf tokens, and then in her flipped forms, we can give all creatures we control plus one plus one and trample. We can deal uh, minus one to deal three damage to target creature or player. And her ultimate is uh, creatures you control have haste, and you can tap this creature down to deal damage equal to its power to target creature or player. I don't think I've ever actually used Arlencord's ultimate ability, but uh, it's pretty sweet if you could get there. Next up, uh, we've got a big creature, so we've got the Archangel Avacyn. So she's a 5 mana 4-4 four, four flyer, we can flash her in as well. Um, when we do flash her in, give all of our creatures indestructible until end of turn. If a non-angel non 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 creature token we control dies, we get to transform her into Avacyn the Purifier, where she sweeps the board for 3 damage and also deals it to our opponent's face as well. And, um, and she's also then becomes a 6-5 flyer. 
Next up is the first of our Gear Hulk. So we've got the Cataclysmic Gear Hulk, which has its sweeper effect, where uh, when it enters the battlefield, each player chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker from among the among la among the non-man permanents he or she controls, then you sacrifice the rest. It's also a 4-5 Vigilance creature, so it's just a nice decent body itself. Next up we have Vodacious Gear Hulk, so this is the green Gear Hulk, so it's a 5 mana 4-4. Four, four. When it comes into play, we get to distribute 4 plus 1 plus 1 tokens uh, to any number of targets we choose, which is awesome. Plus it also has Trample, so potentially for 5 mana we can have an 8-8 eight, eight Trampler. Um, it's probably going to be, you know, anywhere between, I'd say, like 5 and 8 damage with Trample, which is pretty awesome. Next up, we have Planar Outburst. This is uh, the kind of the uh, most expensive of our sweepers. So this is the 5 mana destroy all non-land creatures. Keyword here being destroy, so any indestructible creatures can't be destroyed by this. It does have the Awaken ability as well, which is also very, very useful late game. Uh, Obnixilis is our uh, 5 mana Black Planeswalker with 5 loyalty. We can use him to draw cards, destroy creatures, and also give the emblem wherever a player draws a card, or that target opponent loses to life. Next up is the second of the Planeswalkers added into Kaladesh. So we've got the Nissa Vital Force. So it's a 5 mana, 5 loyalty Planeswalker where we can plus 1 to turn a land into a 5 5 elemental creature. We can also use it to return target creature from our graveyard to, to our hand, so a bit more recursion. Uh, we also get an emblem. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card, so uh, pretty useful late game. Next up, we've got the second of our angels, which is Limvala the Preserver. So she's a 6 mana 5 5 flyer. Um, if she enters the battlefield and our opponent has more life than us, we get to gain 5 life, which is always very handy, especially late game. Also, if our opponent has more creatures than us, we get to summon a 3-3 white angel creature token with flying onto the battlefield as well. Uh, next up, we have Noxious Gear Hulk, which is a, uh, a six. Which is the next of our Gear Hulks, so it's a 6 mana black Gear Hulk. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, we may destroy another target creature. Uh, if a creature is destroyed this way, we get to gain life equal to its toughness. So uh, a very nice late game uh, ability to destroy a creature and gain life from it. So a good tempo swing. Plus it has menace as well, which is really, really cool. The last of the gear hulks is the combustible gear hulk. I do like this card. So it's a, uh, a six mana, six, six creature. When it enters the battlefield, our opponent gets a choice. We either get to draw three cards or those, or the top three cards of our library go into our graveyard. If the opponent chooses to put the cards into the graveyard, we then do damage equal to those cards converted mana cost. Say for example, we were to have Sorin, Chandra and Green Warden and Marassa put into the graveyard. That would do a combined 18 damage in one hit. So it's a really bad, you know, we either get the huge tempo swing from drawing all the cards or we get the massive damage uh, pushed through instead so it is a pretty crazy card plus it's a 6-6 six, six first striker so on its own it is a pretty good pretty good card next up we have green warden of Marasso. this is a uh, another recursion card which when it comes into play we get to return target creature from our graveyard to our hand to our hand when it dies we can also then uh, return another target creature card from our graveyard to our hand as well we do have to exile it if we do that uh, next up is Chandra, so our 6 mana 4 loyalty planeswalker. Uh, she can either summon the 3 1 elemental creatures, um, we can use her to draw a completely new hand, or we can use her to sweep the board as well, so the last of our sweepers basically. And then finally, to finish off with, we have Sorin Grim ne Nemesis. So with this one, we can either draw cards and deal damage equal to that card's mana cost. We can minus X Sorin to deal damage to target creature or planeswalker and gain life. Or we've got the ultimate ability, which again, I don't think I've ever used, where we can put a number of 1-1 one, one black vampire knight creature tokens onto the battlefield equal to the highest life total among all players. To finish off with, in terms of the mana base, we've got three plains and three swamps, two mountains and two forests. Uh, and then we've got one of each of the Smouldering Marshes and the Rootbound Crags, uh, two Clifftop Treats, two Isolated Chapels, two Dragon Skull Summits, two Sun Petal Groves, and four Evolving Wilds. So that is the deck. Let's go play some games. Okay, guys, here we are for game number one. I completely missed who we're playing. Is it is just a long string of numbers? So we're going to see what we've got here. Um, I think we can keep this because we've got the explosive vegetation, so I'm probably going to grab a black mana from our evolving wilds, just so in a couple of turns time we can use the Oath of Liliana. Uh, from the explosive vegetation, we probably want double white at the moment, just so we can get Cataclysmic Gear Hulk down on turn 5. But we'll see what we draw into, so if we draw like a, a white mana at any point, we obviously don't need to worry about getting the white mana from the evolving wilds. So let's make sure we pause up here. Pop our Cracker of Evolving Wilds, get that black mana in place. 
There we go. Root Band Crag only requires us to have a, uh, a mountain or a forest in play, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. Excellent. That's really good. We've actually got a white mana from the Sun Petal Grove, which is awesome because we don't we can oh, we don't need to worry about getting a second white mana from our explosive vegetation now. We can just get a black and a white mana would probably be the best play right now. So good. Our opponent is playing as slowly as we are. We found Sorin, which is fantastic. We're going to have the mana in place for that very soon. I don't really want to do Oath of Liliana quite yet, so I'm just going to pass the turn here. So next turn we're going to explode the vegetation. We're going to grab that black and that white source I think would be a good idea. So we've got Fevered Visions, okay. It's interesting. So I think the only one, that, the only card we've got that can deal with that is the. Um, so what do we want to do here? Let's play out the forest, and then we're going to explode the vegetation. Get that black and that white source. We are going to take two damage from the fevered visions. That is fine. I mean, we could even get Sorin down next turn if we really wanted to. It would actually be a good idea. As we've got. Um, we don't really want to do the Cataclysmic Gearhog if we don't need to right away. So we are. this is going to start draining him pretty fast once we get it down. Okay, so we've got a Weaver of Lightning. I will double check what he does in a second. So whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Weaver of Lightning deals one damage to target creature and opponent controls. And it has reach, so not really that bothered by that creature. We do also have the Vedacious Gear Hulk as well. So I think we're probably going to get... Let's go for Oath of Liliana, actually. You know, let's uh, let's let's be clever about this. So it's going to force him to sacrifice up this creature. There we go. And then we'll probably get Sorin down next turn when we can actually get the uh, zombie out of it as well. So we're just getting more and more mana here, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, we're not in a bad place at the moment. Okay, so he has actually managed to find the tutelage. Haha, <laughs> so we've got the Cataclysmic Gearhawk here. So he's going to have to make a decision between um, tutelage or fevered visions, I think. So we're going to get milled once here, which is fine. So yeah, I think I'm going to go for the Gearhawk this turn. Because that's going to force him to choose between both of these. So choose an artifact that won't be sacrificed, choose a creature that won't be sacrificed, and choose an enchantment that won't be sacrificed. So let's see which one he goes for. I'm assuming he's gonna yeah, he's gonna crack he's gonna pop open the uh the fever divisions. Which is good for us, as it now means that we can just, you know, start going to town here. We're gonna get milled down a lot slower. The fever divisions was probably gonna kill us faster than the milling. So we just need to start beating it down at this point. I'm probably going to go for Sorin just because it's going to allow us to start draining him with his plus one ability. He's going to exquisite firecraft my face. No, he's going to exquisite firecraft my Vedacious Gear Hulk. Interesting. And then he's going to Galvanic Bombardment. Okay, that is fine. I don't really care. That did its job of getting rid of the Fevered Visions. Or do we go for Chandra here and just... Um, start trying to push through as much damage as possible. I think that's probably the better option here. Sorin, I'm probably going to wait on Sorin. Get him down next turn. So let's just start going to town with Chandra. He's got no green, so we don't have to worry about fog effects. Come on. There we go. Marvellous. So uh, let's see if we can, you know, deal with the mill by cheesing out with the uh, super friends instead so he's going to mill us for another two but it's fine we got rid of the fevered visions which was the problem the day uh, the cataclysmic gear hulk did its job there what did we lose there uh avacyn eh, we're not we're not really a bad way here we've got lots of answers here chandra and sorin and the vedacious gear hulk should see us through i feel wondering what else he's got whether or not he's got any counter any more card draw uh 
So I think at this point we're probably just going to be okay. So he has activated the Wandering Fumarole. And then he's going to disperse my zombie. That's completely fine. The most damage he can do here is Fort Chandra. So next turn, I've got, I've got a phone call coming in, guys. I will be right back. Hello? You're right, Kelvin. Okay. Okay. Um Sure. Okay. How many how many miles? 38. Okay. Um, I'd have to have a think about it. Um, I'd have to come in tomorrow morning if that's all right. What, 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 what I was also thinking is that um, this weekend, we, me and my wife are travelling down to like near Bath to go to, a friend's uh, to go to our friend's engagement party. And what I was almost thinking is on the way back, we could almost pop over to Ponty... If, if, if we could almost pop over to Ponty Prid and actually pick up the, potentially pick up the car from there. But I'd have, to talk to her, I'd have to talk to her about that as well and then get back to you. Sure. They've request. Sure. Sure. Okay. Okay, um, so I'll have a chat with my wife and then let her know and ask her what she thinks. So, okay. So, um, uh, yeah, yeah, that'd, that'd be great. I'll have a look at the uh, I'll have a look at the details and uh, let you know let you know what I think. Sure. Okay. Okay, thank you. Bye now. Okay, guys, I'm back. I really apologise. I've had to actually take my turn um, because the timer was running out and I was on the phone to the guy. Uh, so what I've ended up doing... Oh, crap, I just realised I didn't get to plus one Sorin. So what I did is I swang... Swang? Swung with the two, what, the two tokens from Liliana. And so he's going to deal five damage to target planeswalker, is it? No, deals four damage to target creature, deals three damage to target opponent. Yeah, I completely forgot to plus one Sorin in there, which was really silly of me. So uh, that's really annoying. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm having a problem where basically I was, I, I was going to buy a car and then they've now told me that it can't be moved closer to... I've just realised he's milled me for eight here, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, that's really annoying that I didn't plus one Sorin there. I'm now really annoyed by that. Because that could have actually been his death or pretty close to his death already. So I now need something to deal with some additional damage. We do have... Um, let's plus one Sorin first, see what we get. Please be something good. Oh, that is like the worst card! Jesus Christ. Um... So we're going to go for Vedacious Gear Hulk here and just hope that he can't mill me down this turn. One, two, three, four. There we go. We're also going to play out Chandra. And then let's plus, let's plus one up. There we go. So this should in theory deal two damage to our opponent. Yep. And then uh, it was a mana. So providing he can't mill me down this turn, we will win. I think. Yeah, it's really annoying that I forgot to plus one Sorin last turn. Although I don't think it would have mattered because we had two mana on top of our deck. Although we would have had like all these like cards potentially before he milled me. 
So I don't think he's going to be able to mill me down in time here. He's just drawn an additional card. So that will mill us for one. So yeah, the, like I said, the only thing you really missed was just me swinging with the two tokens and we won anyway, which is excellent. Okay, uh, let's move on to game number two. Okay, guys, here we are for game number two. Um, I'll find out who we're playing in a second. So we've, he's got himself a, the nice uh, Nissa card back. I'm going to draw a new hand here. Uh, yep, yeah, we're going to keep this hand. We've got the sweeper, which is good. Um, probably going to get a black from this. And we only need to draw one more mana in the next three turns to make this completely viable. So we're playing Diablo... Sorry, Diablo's Del Deloncra, something like that. So let's make sure we actually pop Crack Evolving Wilds here. It would be a good idea. Uh, let's get the black mana, as that's pretty important. Things like uh, Obnixilis and other cards we might play. So I'm going to drop the Sun Petal Grove this turn. Because uh, that will then allow us to play out the Mountain and then potentially Radiant Flames next turn. So yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry about that phone call in the previous game, guys. Um, I, I'm supposed to be starting work on Monday, and I went to buy a car, and yeah, they told me they could move it closer because it was in like a different part of the country. And then I got told, I got basically got told today that it, they can't move it, and it's like, well, it's Friday. I needed it for Monday. Why didn't you tell me this sooner? So I'm a little bit annoyed. So he's playing an energy-based deck by the looks of things. Um, so let's just play out the red mana here. Red mana here. Okay, just don't play out any red mana then. Wow, that is really annoying, that lag. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit annoyed by that. So I've got to talk to my wife when she gets home and discuss what we need to do next. Um, also, one piece of good news. I actually finally bought my new graphics card the other day, guys. Bought myself the GTX 1070. Oh my god, it's such a good card. It was, it's, just, it's been amazing to just go and just start playing games like completely maxed out again. I've been finishing The Witcher 2 and just to see it like with all the uber sampling and stuff available. Oh my god. Um, so he's playing, yeah, like an energy based deck with like Dynavolt Tower and stuff like that by the looks of things. So, so I think what we want from this explosive vegetation is probably a black. Yeah, we'll get a black and a red, I think. That's the only one we don't have two of. Red and black. Yeah, we've got two of green, two of white. Yeah, two white. Yeah, two white, two green. So that is fine. So next turn, we've got the option between Limvala and Obnixilis. Or even Vedacious Gearhulk. We've got we've got a, a, a whole smorgasbord of uh, things we could do next turn. Could even Radiant Flames. Depends on what he plays out. He plays out multiple creatures, I'm probably just going to Radiant Flames. So he's going to gain more energy. So he's at six. So he can deal three damage now. He needs five energy to do that. Built to smash. Target attacking creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Oh my god, that is terrifying. So we're going to take a whole swathe of damage here, unfortunately. We're going to get up to 13. So yeah, I think we need to Radiant Flames. Okay, that's good. So we've got, we're going to do Radiant Flames first. Doesn't really matter how much we do it for. And then we're going to do Oath of Gideon second. So I don't know why he's pausing there. Just so we don't lose our tokens, which is good. We're probably going to have to Limvala next turn, which will get us... So he's going to deal three damage to us. Going to drop him down to only three energy. Uh, that will get us five life back. I'm not really too worried by the token right about now. I'm more worried about getting five life back from her. So we've got here then key to the city discard a card up to one target creature can't be blocked this turn so he's going to tap it down so sorry um i almost had to cough there so i managed to resist myself so whenever it untapped you may pay two if you do so draw a card okay that's interesting we can also anguish and make the dynavolt tower if we really need to so i'm just going to swing for two here with our two tokens like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can't Limvala and Anguish on Make, unfortunately, but he doesn't have the energy to actually activate Dynavolt Tower right now anyway. So yeah, I think we're going to drop Limvala. Just because it's going to get us all the way back up to 15 health, which is good. And also give us a 5-5 five, five Flyer in the air, which is never a bad thing. So he's going to pay two mana, I would assume, and draw a card. Yes, he did decide to do that, but it does only put him on two mana. 
I do love these full art lands. I'm looking forward to when I've actually got enough, um, enough spare gold to actually consider buying these um, full art lands because they do look they do look incredible, and I will be looking forward to using them. So he's going to tap down his key to the city again. So what he got was a mana, which is interesting. He must have a lot of he must have a lot of spare mana in hand. Okay, good. We've got the Evolving Wilds. Uh, do we go for Ob or do we go for the Vedacious Gear Hulk here and just dump it all on top of Limvala, maybe? A couple on Limvala, a couple on Vedacious, maybe? That's a good idea, I think. So we want a couple on you, just so we've actually, you know, not put all our eggs in one basket and he's decided to leave. Okay, I think we've actually got time for a third game. Oops, a daisy. There we go. Um, I've just realised something that uh, I can't actually click on. There we go. So now we can leave game. Excellent. Whew. Okay, guys, here we are for the final game of today. Again, I'll double check who we're playing as I've uh, completely missed it already. That we, that opening hand we cannot keep. Again, this is a quite nice opening hand. So we'll get the black mana from the Evolving Wilds and then just start dropping our dual manas. And then hopefully by turn four, we can explode the vegetation and then just start dropping things like Nyssa and Chandra, which is pretty cool. Okay, so we've got so we've got an ether hub, so he can he basically gets was it one energy, and then he can use that energy to tap down tap back down for any color he wants, and then he's played out a bomb, bomb out courier, so he can swing with that straight away. So we could do something like an oath of Gideon potentially, just to get a couple of small creatures down to deal with this. Uh, something like a radiant flames pardon me, would also be quite useful in the next couple of turns. Uh, Cataclysmic Gear Hulk will be useful in like two or three turns time potentially. Do like the whole energy idea, it's a very clever idea. I love the way they've represented it with the uh, the energy reserve that you just put tokens on. Okay, so he's got two ether hubs, and he has used one of them to get a Speedway Fanatic. So we could really do with, like I said, an Oath of Gideon would be nice, or um, a Radiant Flames, again, would be really, really sweet. We obviously can't use it next turn, unfortunately, but... Uh, so we're going to take three damage. Okay, so whenever, whenever that one attacks, he has to exile it. So this is really annoying. We really need that fourth mana next turn to actually get the explosive vegetation down. Otherwise, we're going to be in a whole world of pain really soon. So we've got to start rubbing the deck, guys. We want that fourth mana. We want it. We've got the mana already for the explosive vegetation. So we need either one of the black tap black thing tap lands, or we need just any kind of basic land. Would be fantastic. I would love to destroy that one as he's exiled three cards from his deck. We're going to drop down the third unfortunately come on we need you come on because we're not in a good way here we're taking a lot of damage and uh what we got here then Fa foundry screecher okay i would actually just take um what's the one i'm looking for um my radiant flames that is acceptable i suppose let's go for explosive vegetation we're gonna have to go for it here i feel uh, what do we need? So we've got... Have we got double red? No, so we need at least one red. And we've already got the double white. So one red and one black, I suppose. So yeah, Chandra's going to come down next turn, sweep the board for one. But that will leave us at one, three, seven health. So not the greatest life total, but... Um, Hopefully, once we've swept the board with Chandra, we're going to be in a much better situation. So he's got key to the city. We could do something that gives us life, like Sorin would be useful. We've got all the mana we need now to play out every single card in the deck, which is the whole reason why we run the explosive vegetations. So like I said, we are going to drop down. So it gets plus one zero as long as you control an artifact. Yeah, I thought it was going to be something like that. Play out another creature. Make Ah, no, that's a shame. That's fine. We're just going to drop Chandra, I think. There we go. And we've also got a combustible gear hulk, which is going to be fantastic next turn. We only need to sweep the board for one here, because he's uh, got lots and lots of one drops, uh, one toughness creatures. Sorry. Wonder what he's got here. Then he can only tap this down for one color. 
Okay, so we have stabilized in theory now. We have gear hulks to come. We have other planeswalkers to come. We can also potentially play out something like Nissa, start turning one of our manners into um, a creature every turn. So I'm probably going to go for the combustible gear hulk here. Oh, excellent. We've got another sweeper. So let's go for uh, Chandra. We're going to swing at his face first. What's he got for us? Um, so he's going to destroy one of these. So he does. Oh, he does control an artifact. So we did actually, unfortunately, take uh, the three damage there from the uh, from the card. And he's going to twin bolt it as well. That's annoying. So he's going to ping one at my face, two at my face. Okay. So this is where I want three six drops to come out of this. Is he going to take the damage? Does he get to see these cards? Nope, he does not get to see these cards. Does he get to see these cards? So... So no, we just drew all three cards. All three of the... Okay, so he's just going to destroy my creature. And we... That's a shame, you know. We didn't quite match stable out in time. And then he was just able to just start beating us in the face. <sighs> okay, so not the best way to end off the video, but it was it's still fun. I like this deck. So uh, that is it for now, guys. As always, don't forget to comment and like if you enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.